There's nothing that quite compares to a well-prepared rotisserie chicken. In my search for a means to produce a rotisserie chicken outdoors on my patio, I came across an online classified for use item selling one of these units. The seller was asking 20 Canadian dollars for it and saw fit to tell potential buyers in the ad that he would scrap the unit before accepting less. I was happy to pay 20 bucks for it and even gave his friend a $5 tip for carrying it off of his apartment balcony and down three flights of stairs to my car. This particular electric barbecue has a unique distinction of being the only one of its kind on the market featuring a heating element that can be turned 90 degrees into a vertical position for rotisserie use. And because it relies on an electric element as a heat source, it is suitable for most jurisdictions that have bylaws banning gas or charcoal barbecues from apartment balconies or decks. That is why I refer to it as the world's best balcony rotisserie, but it is also a pretty decent everyday barbecue as far as electric grills go. Unfortunately, the unit I purchased was missing a few parts and the thumb screws for the rotisserie forks were rusted beyond saving. I found a universal rotisserie bracket on Amazon, but when it came to replacing the thumb screws, none of the local stores had them in stock. And not being very fond of these puny little things to begin with, I didn't want to spend $8 to have a $5 two-pack shipped to me. I ended up replacing them with much better and much cheaper eye bolts from a local hardware store. You can see here where I had to cobble the rotisserie mounting bracket to adjust its depth and shim it to align properly with a couple of washers. That just left the small part that holds the element in the 90 degree position. That part would have to be shipped from the US, the cost would be ridiculous. So I simply cobbled together another little piece which works quite nicely. When researching this item before purchasing it, I landed on the website for Mako Corp of Greenville, Tennessee. The company that manufactures the Americana barbecue brands. Call me old fashioned, but I always prefer products built and providing jobs on this continent if the choice exists. As these units come in a variety of configurations, I was quite pleased to find a listing for the exact product I was considering purchasing in the used market. This allowed me to glean a bit more information about the unit I was soon to own. My original plan was to use this older unit until it died and then replace it with a new unit but became a bit concerned to find that while comparing prices, almost all of the online sellers of this product were out of stock. I mean all of them. Except for two places in the U.S. with either limited inventory or extremely delayed delivery, neither of which shipped to Canada anyways. This prompted me to send an email off to Mako Corp to inquire about product availability. They responded within a business day. Okay, so I can order a new one from Wayfair.ca in a few weeks, so in the meantime I can try a bunch of different things on this unit. I've already done a number of rotisserie chickens with this unit, so the first thing on my list of electric grill rotisserie experiments will be an inexpensive pork loin roast. In this case, we'll be grilling one half of a five pound pork loin roast where I've trimmed off the excess fat and have used butcher's cord to truss it into a cohesive rotisserie ready shape. I will be using both an easy to prepare rub and an extremely easy to prepare glaze to be applied later in the cooking cycle with about 25% of the glaze set aside to drizzle on the roast just before serving. First let's talk about the rub. I make my own. Sort of. It begins with two primary ingredients in a barbecue spice and a malty spice. Then salt, pepper and garlic powder are added to taste. Sometimes onion powder or other spices are added in as well. The barbecue spice is really the foundation of this rub and I have my favorites for this purpose. Today I'm using Irie brand but have substituted both the barbecue spice and malty spice quite successfully in the past with different brands of each. Let's take another look at the glaze. This is as basic and as easy as it gets with one third of a cup of the first three ingredients mixed with three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. And of course many of these products can be substituted very easily. Be sure to set aside about 25% of this glaze to use when serving while the main portion is applied at about the three-quarter mark of cooking time. I've dumped all over here, so let's run through the entire rotisserie setup and prep. An important step before mounting your chicken or roast on the rotisserie grill rod is to set one fork so that you are grilling in the center of your barbecue. So the opening is about 20 inches wide. You can see at the halfway point it's around 10. And so envisioning the size of the roast, I've set the one fork there. So it's set at around the 13 inch mark. So yeah, that's about right, about six inches across. Placing the roast on the grill rod after it has been trimmed and trussed is simply a matter of finding the center of balance for the chunk of meat as best you can. The remaining fat you see at this point will be melted away by the cooking process. Now it is time to coat the roast, first with olive oil and then with the rub. 
which I never actually rub on. I will post the ingredient measurements for this rub later on in the video. The biggest advantage of electric grills over all other barbecue fuels is the consistent cooking temperature which allows me to say with absolute confidence that this roast will take about an hour and a half to cook. Other advantages include the set and forget nature of controlled consistent heat which facilitates food prep or firing up a second grill at the same time. That's what it looks like after 45 minutes. You can see it's starting to it really look good. And here we are about an hour and 10 minutes ready for the glaze. there is about 20 minutes of cooking time remaining. When cooking pork it is important to be certain that the internal temperature has reached a minimum of 145 degrees Fahrenheit but I prefer above 165 degrees to ensure that no chance of uncooked portions remain. This 170 degree reading is ideal and as we cut into the finished product I'll show you why. First we will need to remove the butcher cord trussing and some minor trimming of the remaining gristle may be necessary. All right, let's see what this looks like. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's moist and cooked right through. That's just perfect. Now it's time to cut the roast into serving portions and drizzle it with the remaining glaze we set aside. And there you have it. An inexpensive cut of pork loin trimmed of all fat and gristle with enough perfectly cooked lean meat to feed four people. Did I tell you about the best $42.29 I ever spent? Well again another video comes to an end. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing and as always I hope to see you next time. When the stars will shine for you and your dreams turn black and blue On those dark nights you'll be alright I'll be right there with you Together we'll see it through When the stars won't shine for you and your dreams turn black and blue On those dark nights You'll be alright, I'll be right there with you Together we'll see it through